Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Man vs. Code. Uh, first things first, thank you, thank you once again to everyone to the, who just took a moment out of their time to reach out to me and thank me um, for my first two videos. I'm super glad that, uh, you know, there's people out there that have found that helpful, people that are enjoying ReasonML and Reason React with Next.js. Uh, we're going to take a slightly different tack with this video. This is going to be a super short and sharp video because I think it's about time we gave our application a backend and I want to show you just how quick and easy it is to do this with apps in GraphQL. So I'm going to make it super short and sharp. Let's get straight into it. I don't want to waste any time with this. Okay, so the very first thing you need to do is actually install and configure AWS Amplify. I'm not going to run that through with you because it's really simple. I'm just going to tell you to go to this address, aws.amazon.com slash amplify, also linked in the description below. Hit the get started button. Um, oh, sorry, before, you know, it's going to prompt you and tell you to sign up to um, AWS if you don't have one. There's a, um, a free tier account, then install the CLI, so the instructions are all here and then run uh, Amplify Configure and answer the questions there below. Okay, so once you've installed Amplify and you've run Amplify Configure, you then need to install, uh, sorry, initialize Amplify when you thin your project. So the way to do that is by running Amplify in it. This is going to take you through a series of questions and I'm gonna show you how to answer those now. So the first one, we're gonna call this my uh, blog. We're gonna call the environment dev dev and my text editor is um, webstorm the project type is javascript it's a react project and the source directory is just that source um, for next.js the output directory will actually be out and we can leave that as the build script for now do you want to use an aws profile um, yes i'm just going to select the default Now uh, let it do its thing. It's going to push all your um, it's going to push your environment to an S3 bucket within AWS. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to show you how really super super easy it is to actually create a GraphQL service. All you need to do is define your schema file. Um, so I've already done that, and I've placed a, a schema file within source a GraphQL um, schema.graphql. So this is it here. Um, this is all up on, on my GitHub. If you're continuing on from the previous project, um, this is project 03. Um, and here is the schema. We've, for this, for this um, project, we've just defined two, two objects. One is an author who has some attributes, first name, last name, email, etc. And an author can have uh, many posts, which is indicated by the, uh, the, the square brackets. We've, we're creating essentially a list of posts and a connection to this other object type posts. And similarly, uh, a post will have a type of author and uh, is indicated by the connection, which we name posts. So the other thing worth noting here is that by including this at model directive, it will, um, AppSync will automatically create a DynamoDB table which will map all our uh, queries, mutations, and subscriptions to, which is very cool. Now, to actually uh, deploy this, we'll go back to our terminal. This is how easy it is. All we need to do is run Amplify API add. It will ask us a series of questions, which we need to answer honestly. It knows if we're lying. GraphQL uh, provider, call it my blog. We're just going to secure it with an API key for now. Enter a description of the key. We'll just call it my blog dash key. How many days do you want it to expire? Go with the default 180. Do you want to configure any advanced settings? Uh, no, I do not. Do I have an annotated GraphQL schema? Yes, I do. Let's uh, specify the schema path slash GraphQL slash schema dot. That looks about right. And that's it. And now to actually uh, publish your changes, we just run amplify push. Do you want to generate your code? Yes, we do. And we want JavaScript. Uh, enter the file name, just select the default. 
Do you want to generate, update all possible GraphQL operations, queries, mutations? Yes, absolutely. This is one of the benefits of AppSync GraphQL. It does all this for you and it's awesome. Um, I'm going to go three for deeply, how deep I want my schema to be nested. And now it's going to update the resources in the cloud. As it says, it's going to take a few minutes. Once that is finished, we can switch over to the AWS console and we can see our handiwork in action. So uh, now that I'm in the console, uh, just browse over to AWS AppSync. And here we can see the, uh, the API that we've created. So let's just click on that. And one of the things it asks us to do is um, run a query. So let's do that, run a query. On the right side, um, so this is, it gives you, it's cool, it gives you a little sandbox that you can run your, uh, test your queries out. Um, you can see the documentation on the right side, so it tells you exactly what queries and mutations and subscriptions are available. So if I want to create an author, uh, it tells me here, there is a create author mutation available to me, and it takes the input of create author, which tells me the fields that are required um, or that it accepts. Okay, so let's actually do that now. Let's create an author. So I'm going to just delete all of that and I'm going to uh, run a mutation. Call it create author. And so it is going to be the create author. It's going to accept an input. Um, and if you notice the, um, the sandbox is clever enough to suggest to me um, what fields need to go in here. So it's going to need a first name and we're gonna call this guy art, last name Vandalay, email art Vandalay at industries.com okay and uh, once the um, item has been created I'm going to ask for it to return the ID um, the email the first name last name uh, created at and updated created at and updated at are fields that will have automatically been created because um, that's just how it works. If you add these two fields and you make them of scalar types, AWS uh, date time, uh, we'll see that it automatically sets these. Same with the ID, it'll automatically create a new ID. That's why I didn't have to pass it in here. So it's very cool. Um, let's hit play that and see it's actually returned the author that we've created. Now, if I want to then uh, query a list of authors, let's go, list authors and say, okay, just give me um, ID, oh, sorry, items with ID and email. Comment this one out. And that's it. Uh, that's how easy it is. So there you have it, gang. That is how easy it is to create a GraphQL service with its own DynamoDB database. Um, so again, this is the third video now in our series. We're going to continue on with this next video. We're going to hook into this. We're going to hook our application into this using Reason Apollo, which is going to be very cool. Uh, Reason Apollo hook specifically. Hope you enjoyed it. If you do, uh, likes, thumbs up, subscribe. Uh, there's going to be heaps more coming. I'm loving doing this stuff. Uh, thanks again, everyone. Until next time.